Uh, this is some garage time with my 2003 Audi S6. What do we got going on with it? I've been putting this video off because I got other stuff going on. But let's see if we can see this. We've got a couple store, um, five, let's see here, is it, how many codes we got here? Two lean bank one, P2096. P0159, O2 circuit slow response. See, this is bank two, sensor two. That was the last one as well. Heater circuit, bank two, sensor two, P0161. And then we have two secondary air faults. P0491 and 492. So we'll talk about the secondary air injection in a separate video. In this video, I'm just going to be replacing the oxygen sensor. And why would I replace the oxygen sensor? Not every time that you have an oxygen sensor fault, it's the oxygen sensor. We're gonna get underneath the car and talk about it more. Let me shut this thing off so I don't drain the battery. And also I'm gonna pull this old cheap scan tool out. Let's get started. So I did exhaust work on this thing. You know, the welds don't look the best, but they'll actually hold up perfectly fine. You know, I've just got a 110 plug-in welder right now, and I went ahead and sprayed a little spray paint on them just to make sure they wouldn't rust. Uh, put on some hangers here. Eventually, I'm gonna upgrade my welder and go back to my shielded gas, but right now I just have a shielded wire 110. So one of these days I'll spend money on it, but what I've got right now has been getting me by. You know, I, these right here, these uh, flex pipes blew out. So I did some custom flange work right here and uh, I put these pipes in right here and then from here back is factory. Except right here there was resonators and I chopped those resonators out, put pipes, and then from here back is factory. So all it is is straight pipes into the factory mufflers. But what I got is a uh, oxygen sensor. The oxygen sensor that's messing up is actually bank two. So bank two is the driver's side. If you're standing in front of the engine like this, right, bank one will be the passenger side and bank two will be the driver's side. So then we go around here on this side, bank one, bank two. So, and it's post catalyst. So it's after the catalytic converter. So the one, the business end is the one before the catalytic converter up there, the one that gets real hot and does all the metering and stuff. You know, this one can still throw faults and can still mess you up. I uh, welded in these little extenders as well to, you know, do the, do the deal. So that's for a different video. I'm just getting to this oxygen sensor here and I'll, I'll show you, I'll get to it when I get to it, but this wire is crazy. It goes way up there on the top of the transmission tunnel. It tucks way up in there. It goes way up underneath the hood and I'll show you where it ends up. But, uh, you know, if I was getting paid to do this, this is just, this doesn't leak or anything. I just painted this as well. It's just shiny paint. Um, so yeah, if I, if a customer was paying me to replace this, this would cost a lot of money just because the wire routing, but I'm not necessarily concerned with the wire routing. Look, you can buy aftermarket oxygen sensors and they have you put your own plug on it. So I'm not concerned one bit about putting these heat shrink weatherproof butt splice connectors on. I'm going to just chop off the wire a little bit further up. I'm gonna butt splice connector it on and for good measure, I'm going to put some heat wrap around this pipe, even though it's not going to be that hot to do anything. And I'm going to clean up these wires and just fix this whole situation because I, I didn't actually fix up this oxygen sensor whenever I did this exhaust work, which I probably should have. But part of the deal was I was hoping that maybe some of the exhaust work would fix this post catalyst because I had some flex pipe leaks. So... But no, it's actually, you know, anytime you have a heater circuit malfunction and things like that, 
you're just gonna need to replace this sensor. So let's, let's get to replacing it now. So first we're just going to uh, break this thing loose. Let's get a pair of Nipex pliers here. And all right, well, it's wanting to spin the whole thing. I only want to get the sensor out. So I'm gonna tighten that a little more and then hopefully it busts loose, yep. All right, now uh, it's going to spin this out. Let's see, better view there in the center. So there's nothing we can do. It's just, uh, it's bit the dust. I'm gonna take it back to right here though. And I'm just going to simply, so we got two white wires, this, and then the black wire is the signal wire, and then the voltage wire. I don't know exactly what the gray one is. I'd have to relook it up. I don't have it off memory. But I know these two white wires, so I just match the colors, right? But the two white wires throw some people off. But this is just uh, like lighting a light bulb or something. These, these, the polarity of these do not matter. This is just for the heater circuit. So one of the rules of thumb for doing a wiring like this is it's a good idea to stagger your connections. You don't necessarily want all your butt splice connectors in a big fat group. So a lot of times what people will do is, or what we're trained to do is, I'm gonna cut a little bit more up here off this. So we got a little bit more to work with. Not too much though, because I like this. It's the heat sheet, heat sheathing, heat sheathing. So th that's all the way down. So then we'll go a little bit further up here, right? And then we'll go a little bit further up on the gray one. And then I'm gonna cut a little bit more of this. And then the black one will be cut right up here. You see that? So all four of them are staggered. Now I'm gonna do that same stagger on my new oxygen sensor. So let me find where I put it real quick. And approximately like an hour later, I finally found it. I set it in a really dumb spot. Man, I need to need to be thinking more, but I I got like way too many things going at once and I need to start honing in more because things are getting a little ridiculous around here. So uh this is going to make some people not so happy, but you know what? It's my channel and I don't really care. This is, yeah, you think I'm not capable of stringing this whole wire in and doing it like I'm supposed to? Yeah, I'm capable of doing that, but this is my car. I don't need to go over this again. I'm, I'm gonna do this the quick, easy way because there's no purpose in stringing the whole wire. This isn't some brand new car in warranty. You know, this thing is like 20 years old, so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop this brand new high dollar oxygen sensor. Now, I wanna go ahead and make sure that I've got enough wire. So you don't wanna cut it too short. I can take the extra wire and tuck it away. So there we go. Now, cut the sheathing back. In this particular case, I'd actually probably like to keep the key, the, whatever sheathing is left, I'd like to keep it, put it that way. So I'm not gonna chop the excess off, I'm just gonna fold it back. Maybe one more. Now I have to make sure that 
I'm doing this properly. Oh, I gotta go a couple more here. There we go. Now, the shortest wire on here is the black, so that's gonna be the longest wire. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, snip this off. I got some wire cutters here. Where are they? So this is a real fancy pair of pliers where you can set your wire length. You can stick it in here and it's supposed to just trim your wire off for you, but maybe maybe let's uh let's give it a head start. Actually, I need I'm going to push this in a little bit more right about I don't need I don't need a whole bunch. Right about there. So Am I happy with that? Not, not necessarily. This is a really, this is a really tough wire. So I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way where you just, take the good old fashioned wire cutters and just barely nick the wire on both uh, both sides and then pull it off you don't really want to get too many finger oils and stuff on there is what they say do i think it's that big of a deal no but so i'm going to do the same thing up here since since i'm uh not so happy with those wire trimmers on this particular style of wire like I said, I'm gonna go the old school way. So, just crunch down on the wire just a little bit and pull it off like that. Now, we've got a different pair of crimpers. This specific butt splice connector, it's got a really small centerpiece, which I don't necessarily like that, but this was Dorman, this is a good brand, so in this particular case, what I'm going to do is, uh, in this particular case, I'm going to push it all the way through like you would with heat shrink or something. And then I'm going to twist these together. right and then I'm gonna push it back over the center now this is a little bit tricky because you don't want it to fall apart so I'm gonna hold it like this and then you really want to make sure that that butt splice connector is in the middle of where you want it to be and then I'm gonna take my special crimper pliers and crimp it down nice Nice. Now, they say you don't want to use a lighter for this either. That you want to use a specific heat gun. But you know what? I use a lighter anyway. I've done this I don't know how many times. And this is going to be just fine. But I do like to work my way around a little bit. Don't just get one side. And what this will do is these are specifically designed to shrink and kind of melt the plastic. Now this is such a tiny wire that it might not even want to shrink all the way. So I'll get as much shrink action as I can, and then, <sighs> ow, ow. Oh, 
I'll kind of help it by smashing the ends flat. And when I did that, molten plastic kind of came out. I probably could have gotten by with one size smaller, but uh, look, I ain't aiming for perfection here. This is my own car. Now the next one we're gonna do is good old gray. So how I'm gonna do this is, this time I'm gonna use this style wire cutter. You see the cutters in here? Or sheathing trimmers. And this wire is so stiff, it doesn't want to cut it with this either. Well, back to the old method. Let me try this one more time. All right. So now I'm gonna come down here and go right about right about there. Nice. Yeah, the old school method works perfect for me. The problem with that is if you don't have a delicate touch, you could trim off some of these wires and you won't have as much continuity going through. I'm gonna ultimately have to trim a little bit more of this heat shrink or the, as I'm working and talking, sometimes I'm not saying the exact thing I'm meaning to say. The uh, heat sheathing. All right, yep, more heat sheathing has to come off. Probably all of it. I'm just, I'm just gonna have to. Deal with it. You see that? Twist them together there. Can't zoom in. All right, center it up perfect. And I'm gonna do the other two the exact same way and I'm just going to uh, heat shrink them all together. There's no need to do them individually like that. So for speed, I'm just go I'll probably just speed up the quit talking and speed up the camera for these last two. But you do want to not really get them too tangled.
You typically wouldn't want to get the lighter so close to these wires because the idea of not wanting to use a lighter is you're going to melt some of the actual wire. But these wires are the insulator on the oxygen sensor wires are specifically made for heat. So I'm being a little bit more rambunctious with this lighter than what I typically would be. Typically, I would leave the flame away from it like this. Now I'm gonna kinda use my hoodie and kinda smash them. And when I smash them, the melted plastic pushes out. So that's a satisfactory watertight seal, in my opinion. And then I'm just gonna take that sheathing, even though it's not all the way covering it, Uh, I'm not even worried about it. I'm gonna take some zip ties and clean that up. Junk zip ties. Buy some good zip ties too. Look at that, these things sat out in the sun. This is just an example. I mean, these things sat out in the rain and the sun um, on my front porch. And look at that, they can't even, how junky is that? Uh, do I even trust these things anymore? What am I gonna do? I need to buy some good zip ties. I'll put tape around it too, but here's one that's still pliable. So those UV rays from that sun, man, they can mess up some zip ties. Or wire ties if you prefer. It's definitely also a good idea to buy good electrical tape too. Not the cheapest stuff you can find because you don't want your stuff falling apart. So this is just a little extra step I probably wouldn't need to do, but it'll make me feel a little bit better. And I'm not gonna go all the way up, just enough to keep the wire in the loom. And then I'm gonna come, come back around. Stretching it just a little bit tight as I go. And then I'm gonna come down a little bit past that zip tie. Now, now we have a little bit of extra wire, but I'll tuck it in there and clean it up. And in this particular case, I'm just going to spin and rotate it like this up here, up higher. And then whenever I go to install, I can release that tension. The twisted wires will not hurt anything.
well. All right, that's nice and tight. You do want to make sure to get it tight. Now, I'm just going to clean up these wires a little bit. And I'm gonna take this heat fabric right here. And just in case they have a tendency to touch that exhaust and do anything, which I don't think they will anyway, I'm gonna put a couple worm clamps right here. There you are, a little bit of heat fabric. And then I'm gonna get one more zip tie to put these together and clean up the rest of the wiring right here. That's all there is to it. That's the easiest way to replace your oxygen sensor if it's in a difficult spot with routing all the way up on the top of the transmission tunnel into the back of the firewall. This is a much easier way to do it. And the wiring that goes to I'll show you underneath the hood where it goes to. And here it is on that side with just the heat fabric right there and the excess loom is just curled around and it's not gonna obstruct the drive shaft or anything up in there. It's definitely out of the way. And like I said, I put these elbows in and I directed these sensors the way they are. So the wire connectors are up here on the firewall, nice and neat in an orderly fashion. This right here is your oxygen sensor wire. And you can see they just, uh, they're tucked way in there. And I prefer the factory way of how they attach the wires and all the looms and all the connections. In my opinion, it's just as good to keep this the same way, leave it alone and just but splice the connectors where I did it. That's actually my preferred method. Other people might argue with me. I'm fully up for it. Have at it. No, you need to keep the wire all together with the sensor. Can't believe you cut those wires. You hack. That's okay. The next thing is the secondary air injection. That's what this pipe goes into the air box for. So I'm pretty sure it's a pump, a little pump motor, kind of like a vacuum, only the opposite. So we'll figure that out next with the power probe.